MGX Minerals is revolutionizing the new energy economy with patented lithium extraction technology, replacing traditional solar evaporation using low-cost, low-energy nanofiltration. The first system of this paradigm shift technology is currently being commissioned. MGX Minerals trades on the CSE, symbol XMG, the OTCQB, symbol MGXMF, and Frankfurt, symbol 1MG. For more information, visit our website, mgxminerals.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Chris Vermeulen from the TechnicalTraders.com. Welcome back to the show, Chris. Thanks for having me, Jim. Chris, is there big action in gold right now? Yeah, we're having, we're having a really nice update in the gold market. Um, you know, we're seeing a, a decent one and three quarters percent pop. And, uh, you know, everyone is getting really excited about gold miners and, and gold in general. Those two have been moving up since really um, late October. And they are really kind of outperforming the rest of the market. It seems to be the safe haven play. And today is a big big up day in gold. We are getting up to some really critical resistance areas. We saw back in 2016, 2017, and 2018. And each time we saw these strong moves in gold near these resistance levels, we saw very sharp corrections in the market. And I feel as though we're going to go into something very similar to what we saw the first three months, four months of this of 2018, where we have Big rallies followed by big drops, and I think gold is going to ping pong between 13 and 1360. So I, I think we're going to see increased volatility. The last time you and I talked, I was expecting to see gold start to consolidate, start to become volatile, and I think that's what's going to happen is we're going to see prices. Um, this is kind of an exhaustion pop. It's usually we see a big move right at the end of a trend, a short-term trend, and then it reverses. And I mean, everyone is feeling like a million bucks today in the gold sector, but what goes straight up, usually near resistance, will come straight back down, and you don't feel that way tomorrow or a couple of days from now. So when everyone's emotional, you usually expect a very strong swing in motion the other direction shortly after, and I think that's what gold miners are going to do. I, I am uh, more or less bearish on them. Looking forward a week from now, I have a feeling they will be trading you know, lower from where we are up today or tomorrow. Is this the kind of trade that you really have to keep an eye on? It is. Uh, based on a short-term technical, like a swing trading profile looking forward, you know, one to maybe 10 days in total. Uh, we're, this is a pure kind of a momentum style play where price is having a big pop and a run into resistance where it's clearly been sold into very heavily in the past. A lot of people are watching this metal, and I do feel as though it's just a short-term trade. You do need to watch. I think today, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, maybe we see this continue to move up a bit more, but then I think those will be the, one of those days should be the top, and we could see a quick um, 8 10% pullback in gold or, um, or the gold miners, more or less, uh, going forward. And, and it'll be nothing more than a bullish correction. It's a short-term trade uh, for active traders you know, looking at this as a long-term point of view, I think we're going to see precious metals trade sideways in a big range here for a month or two. And then I think we're going to see a continuation run to the upside and for gold to finally break out of this 1375 area, which could be significant and, uh, you know, really change the tide and the trend for the, the precious metals market. Is that because you expect the equities market to take a, a fall? It's, it's, a, it's kind of a balancing act. I do feel as though equities here are getting a little long in the teeth. You look at the major broad market, the indexes, they're all trading near those December standout highs on the chart, on the daily chart. We're getting close to those. The Russell 2000 has just broke above it. I feel as though equities are going to have, they're going to push up and just pierce those highs, tag them, or break them a little bit. And I do feel as though we're going to see some big selling step in, and we're going to see some weakness in the precious, met, or sorry, in the overall stock market. And I think that is going to be timed with the pullback here in 
the gold miners. So when the equities market starts to sell off, I think we're going to see it drop very quickly for two or three days. I think it's going to pull gold miners down for two or three days, give us that really nice overbought trade in the miners to the downside. And then money's going to be in shock, and they're going to move to the hot pockets, the safe haven plays. And we're going to see gold miners continue to chop around and move a bit higher while the overall equities market is probably trading sideways or lower. So typically we see the, the markets move together. Gold miners will move, will fall with the stock market. And I think that will only happen for the first couple of days. And then investors are going to be, as they're moving out of regular stocks, they're going to be moving into the gold miners. So that's going to create this sideways um, high volatility range for gold miners going forward. We'll have more with Christopher Mullen right after the break. I'm Greg Johnston, CEO of Carl Data Solutions, an industrial Internet of Things company that provides big data solutions for monitoring critical infrastructure. Carl Data offers machine learning and predictive analytics features through our cloud-based applications to deliver key asset-saving operational insights from massive amounts of data. Carl Data trades on the CSE symbol CRL and the pink symbol CDTAF. For more details on Carl Data, please visit carlsolutions.com. Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia, Saskatchewan, and the Yukon. Trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the pink symbol ABN AF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Chris Vermeulen. Chris, what do you think is going to happen in the metals market? Uh, in the in gold and silver themselves, or uh, other metals, uh, things like copper. Well, I, I think I think we're going to see. Um, you know, we've seen copper really pop and, and take off the last couple of days, or uh, and, and so as palladium. I think I think overall we're going to see commodities continue to firm up and outperform. I do feel as though. Um, we're going to see uh, the, com- the the metals kind of pause and pull back a little bit here. I think they are still going to be under a little bit of pressure for a couple of weeks, um, potentially another month or so. They're all trading at resistance areas, and um, I, I, I just feel as though they're they're all building a base. They have a very bullish bias, but I do feel as though there is going to be a little bit of a play with the U.S. dollar. It's having a strong pullback today, which is really helping. Uh, push metals higher today, but I do feel as though the dollar is poised for a bounce and to continue up to reach that that ninety nine one dollar mark on the dollar index, which will give us this kind of weak time a sideways consolidation in, in metals. So you know, copper's trading; uh, it's right at resistance, trying to break out today. Um, we look at uh, palladium; it's been on a tear, kind of having a actually an, um, an explosive move to the upside today. It looks like it's an exhaustion gap. You know, when I look at all the metals in the minor sectors today, it feels like it's an exhaustion move. You see some of the biggest moves, one-day moves, happen just just before a trend reverses. And we've seen these markets trending up, and we're getting that final, everybody's finally just piling into that trade, and that's how we get these strong moves, and then we quickly see them reverse. So, I feel as though all the metals and the miners are going to have a quick pullback in, in a consolidation because everyone thinks they're going higher and they're all showing signs that they're exhausted or at resistance and exhausted and they're on the verge of a rollover. So I am short-term bearish, more or less on, on commodities for the short term here, but looking forward, uh, you know, two months or so, I think we could be seeing these things continue to, to rock to, to new highs here. Uh, Chris, going back to gold, what do you think the resistance point is going to be? It's at thirteen forty-two right now. Uh, I think the, the key resistance point is going to be somewhere around that thirteen seventy-five mark. I think it's uh, if it breaks that, it will have broken the you know the twenty-six, uh, the, the twenty twenty-six highs, the twenty twenty eighteen highs. Uh, so I think that'll be a pretty significant line in the sand. Really, it's not going to be. A clear breakout until it gets to about fourteen thirty-five, breaking a high that we saw back in early, or sorry, I guess mid twenty thirteen. So, 
I think I think the breakout. I do feel as though everyone's going to start piling in when it breaks thirteen seventy five and closes above there on a weekly or a monthly basis. Both of those would be fairly significant um, signals in the market that it's it's having a breakout. And um, yeah, I think once those levels are broken, we could be you know off to the races to seventeen hundred. We'll have more with Christopher Mullen right after the break. Arctic Star Exploration, operated by a team of proven mine finders, is focused on diamonds in Finland and the Northwest Territories of Canada. Work programs are underway in Finland and Canada. Arctic Star trades on the TSX Venture Exchange symbol ADD, on Frankfurt symbol 82A1, and the OTCQB symbol ASDZF. Please visit our website arcticstar.ca or call us at 604-689-1799. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com Weekly Recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com Weekly Recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Chris Vermeulen. Chris, what's the outlook for natural gas? Well, the last time we spoke, we talked about natural gas working its way down to a really significant support level that's held in place for... Um, about two years, and it's the $2.55 mark on the continuous contract. And this has been hit several times in the past. Uh, each time it's been reached, we've seen a very significant bounce. And really last week, uh, the last two weeks it came down, it's tagged this level. It looks like it's on the verge, just starting to bounce now. And I think we could see a quick pop and a relief rally up to the $3 mark. So I like natural gas. It is clearly at a support level just starting to bounce and it's got some pretty good potential upside from where it is right now and um, it's a pure technical trade typically when you've got a very clear line in the sand and price falls or uh, it falls into that line very quickly usually you get a knee-jerk reaction bounce off that and that's what we're, we're just starting to see now we haven't talked a lot about cryptocurrencies lately what's happening on the crypto front well you know bitcoin had that huge breakdown from the, the $6,000 mark. It completely crashed, and it's been trying to build a base, trying to find a bottom uh, the last several months here. And um, if you look back from November to December, these this kind of bottoming formation that it's found or formed, it's just starting as of today to start to break above its falling trend line, and that is a bullish sign. It isn't really yet making higher highs, um, if it can break above 4,100, then we'll, we'll technically be in a new uptrend with a higher high and a higher low. And um, at this point, we're still in the early stages. It's, today is kind of the day it's starting to break out of, a, of this falling trend. So once it does get some traction, if it can get traction here, you know, I think we're going to see a very quick rally uh, up to that 5,000 mark or potentially the 5,500 mark very quickly. So there's, there's pretty good potential to the upside. Um, I think there'll be a lot of people willing and, and waiting to jump and, and get long once it starts to move up. But that momentum is, you know, it's starting to shift to the upside. It hasn't fully shifted yet. So this pop could very easily get sold into. We've seen it happen several times over the last month and a half that it gets up to this critical trend line, sells back down with some big volume, and um, we need to see it kind of hold above this level. This more or less it needs to hold above thirteen or thirty-eight hundred. And if it can hold above there, then I, I think it uh, stands a very good chance to, to break out above this four forty-one hundred level and start a brand new rally. Have some of these cryptocurrencies that were part of the big mania in uh, twenty sixteen disappeared now. Yeah, I haven't followed. A, I know there are hundreds of them. It's it's amazing how many came out of the woodwork. Uh, but yeah, I think I think uh, hundreds of them have disappeared, off fallen off the chart. You know, the Bitcoin is very much so like the broad market. When the stock market's rising, you know, three out of four stocks are rising with it. Uh, it's kind of like the ocean tide. And Bitcoin is the same thing for digital currencies. Uh, we, when it falls. We find almost all the other digital currencies fall as well. So, uh, and a lot of them were limping along in the first place with, without a whole lot of support behind them. 
or a lot of real demand and uh, simply they just collapsed, fell, fell off the chart, got to the point where uh, nobody's willing to, you know, to buy these coins and, and they just kind of yeah, die. So, yes, there's been a lot of damage to these. It's good. It cleanses the air, gets rid of the weak current currencies, the ones that nobody wants. And um, because there's a lot of scamming currencies out there, uh, they're really just pure manipulation and uh, nothing really behind the scenes. It's just somebody started them and hoping to make a lot of money and um, flip them more or less. Yeah. <laughs> I love the TV ad about cryptocurrency showing kids wearing Halloween masks behind a laptop. <laughs> oh, yeah. There there was a really good, I think Saturday Night Live did a skit on Bitcoin with uh, two ladies and, and, a, and a gentleman. And if you haven't seen it, you've got to go to Saturday Night Live and Google Bitcoin. And it's like a, an ad for Bitcoin, more or less. It is, it's priceless. <laughs> Chris, thank you so much for chatting with us. Always a pleasure, Jim. Thanks for having me on the show. My guest has been Chris Vermeulen from thetechnicaltraders.com. If you have any questions for Chris or any of our other guests, you can send them to info at howstreet.com, our YouTube channel, Talk Digital Network. Find us on Twitter at Street. I'm Jim Goddard. Thanks for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com, HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.